Welcome to Women Now. Our very exciting show starts right now. We've met many exceptional human beings in 2012. We decided to start a segment called Women Now Heroes. We want to honor them, talk to them, find out what motivated them, what was the turning point in their life, what really made them heroes, what makes them give back, what is the motivation. We're talking to Women Now Heroes. You know, um, the title of my uh, talk tells you what I'm going to say. I'm actually a tech guy. I, um, for the most of my life, I used to be a computer programmer, a nerd, a geek, who uh, eventually made it up to vice president to build some great technology. By accident, I became um, an entrepreneur. And I never looked back. Entrepreneurship was in my blood. So when we talk about heroes, a lot of things come to our mind. Movie heroes, social heroes, heroes we worship. Today we are going to introduce a segment on Women Now, it's called Women Now Heroes. We feel those people, we want to follow their path, they're trendsetters, and the first one of that series is Vivek Wadwa. We, I have worshipped him as a hero for a very long time. He's here with me today. Vivek, welcome to Women Now and Women Now Hero segment. All right. It's, it's great to be a hero. So let's start talking about your life, where it began, what was the turning point in your life, what got you here, and what have you really learned in your whole life? You know, I've had many, many turning points. Um, that's the thing, I've had to reinvent myself uh, several times over. I mean, I started off as a computer programmer, basically a nerd that was writing code and uh, working for an investment bank, and I built some technology that was revolutionary, which um, changed the way you develop computer systems. And then IBM came to uh, my first Boston where I was working and funded the creation of a startup company. The company was so successful that we took it public five years later. And then I started my second company, you know, seven years, uh, 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 two years after that. And it was a spectacular success. Now, the sticky thing was when I started looking at entrepreneurship and immigration, I found some very interesting data about Silicon Valley that over a period of 20 or 30 years, it transformed itself. That Annalie Saxian, who's the Dean of Information Systems at Berkeley, had documented in the 90s that a quarter of the startups in Silicon Valley were founded by people like me, Indians and Chinese, typically. I did an update of her research and looked about 15 years later. We found was that 52% of the startups in Silicon Valley were founded by people like me, foreigners, foreign, foreign born, which is just amazing. Suddenly I realized how you can have everything one day, the next day you have nothing. So therefore, the message was that when you have something, try to make the most of it. Try to give back as much to, as you can to society because you don't know how long you're going to live. So if you look at everything I do right now, I'm not worried about making money. I'm not worried about anything. I just try to help as many people as I can and give back and do for the world because, again, now I am actually have risen to a greater peak than I ever was at. And I know that this could end tomorrow. Look at this chart over here. That's the birthplace of founders of Silicon Valley startups. They're from all over the world. Now, Indians are a dominant uh, force over here, but they come from everywhere. Right? I mean, almost every country is represented on this, uh, on this chart. So when you look at it, it really looks like the United Nations, doesn't it? Tell me what has been your finding, the hard truth, why women are really where they are. The reality is that in Silicon Valley, women are left out of the system that they're treated, um, I mean, because I've been talking to, now I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of women, that uh, they're asked demeaning questions by venture capitalists. They're regarded as, um, uh, they're stereotyped as not being as capable as men at, uh, at achieving success. They, uh, uh, they, you know, they're discouraged by society. It starts from their from the childhood. It really starts with mom and dad, that they expect their, their sons to become doctors and engineers and scientists, and the women are going to become housewives. This is something typical in our, in our uh, uh, culture in particular. Now, would that have anything to do with the VCs being male dominant? Yeah, the, so it starts with childhood, and then when, when women join the workforce, they're also stereotyped. They're also uh, treated in, in a weaker way. And then when they decide to become entrepreneurs, they go towards the venture capitalists, the venture capitalists treat them like dirt. Uh, they uh, make all sorts of innuendo comments, uh, like well, what, how does your husband feel about uh, what you're doing? Uh, what, what are you going to do when you have children? I mean, you would never ask a man, a man these questions. So they're uh, subjected to uh, negative comments and, and stereotyping, which is just not fair. So the, many women get discouraged because women tend to be a lot more 
sensitive and a lot more sensible and a lot more caring and giving than uh, you know, some of the men that the VCs deal with are. The, 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 you know, the typical entrepreneur that they deal with here in Silicon Valley is young, brash, uh, you know, arrogant, they make, they make big claims, and the women don't do that. The women are a lot more sensible. They, you know, they have much more moderate expectations about what they can do. They uh, are a lot more uh, conservative with the way they'll spend money. They don't come up with ridiculous business plans saying that we'll give everything away um, and then we'll make it up on volume. You know, you, know, you, they don't, you don't hear them saying the same stupid things that you hear from these uh, brash uh, young, young boys out of Stanford. In the last three years since I've been in Silicon Valley, I've seen a very positive change. Three years ago, I didn't know of any women's, uh, you know, there were some in women's groups in the, in, in the infancy, but now you have women's groups like Women 2O, Astia, Anita Borg, uh, Nancy Witt, very vocal, very determined, uh, and you go to their events, uh, and women are proud of what they're doing, they're mentoring each other, they're helping each other, they're doing all the right things. The same way that Indians founded Thai, you know, 15, 20 years ago, in Silicon Valley, if you were an Indian, you were, uh, uh, you know, the descendant of a beggar or a snake charmer, and um, you were just a low-level engineer, you weren't a CEO. And then what happened? The first generation of Indians you know, cracked the uh, glass ceiling, achieved success, then they said, okay, now it's time for us to help each other. They started actively helping each other. They formed Thai and they formed a number of other organizations, and they made it a point to mentor others like them and to mentor anyone else that asked for help. And look at Indians now. Now when, you, when, now when venture capitalists see an Indian, see an Indian name on a, on, a, on a business plan, that's the first person they call up because Indians make great CEOs now. So Indians help each other and they broke and they changed uh, the stereotype. Women are beginning to do the same thing. I'm very optimistic that, like I said, the women that I'm meeting have a lot of energy. They are determined to succeed. They're determined to help other women. They're determined to change the ratio. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other side of Vivek.